Hi again guys, this is uh, Jonathan Vadas on uh, JV Engineering Concepts. Um, just sitting here in the gym, somebody asked me uh, a question which I wanted to make a quick video about to answer as uh, quickly as possible uh, on my channel. Uh, it had to do with the Hobby King uh, Turnergy Talon Tricopter um, version 1. There is only a version 1 at the moment. And the question was is about the tail section. And I'm going to put a picture up. Uh, uh, on the side here and just keep changing that picture and then zoom into it uh, so you can see a little bit better what I'm talking about but the the question was um, well the, the person basically had an issue with the tail section he says uh, he didn't say exactly what it was but I'm assuming that it wasn't uh, it either wasn't stable enough or um, it was too tight uh, which is what I've usually heard from people where when you tighten that bolt and you can see in the picture, if you tighten the bolt, then uh, that mechanism does move freely. Or if you leave it loose, then it either comes loose uh, while you're flying, uh, or there's too just too much play, and it basically just moves uh, side to side. So um, there's two important things uh, that um, you should do uh, to make, which is what I've done to make my truck copter work very well. Uh, the first uh, one is, and you can see a lot of threads about this, I've actually mentioned this, is to replace the bearing uh, system that's on there. Now there's two options, you can either put two bearings, uh, but then you're going to have to get a longer bolt, and you can do that, that's not a huge issue, you just need to make sure that the, um, the actual bolt itself uh, is the correct length, because it can't be too long, uh, otherwise it'll just stick out. So you need to uh, rather be just a little bit too short. So you need to make that measurement, uh, basically just take the measurement of the extra uh, bearing that you want to put there. Um, and it's a thrust bearing by the way. Uh, so you want to take that extra thrust bearing uh, and then get a bolt that's just that much longer or maybe just a little bit less. Um, so that's, that's one option. The other option is to replace the, the stock thrust bearing and use something like from a, uh, a line T-Rex 450. Now I say a line T-Rex 450 uh, and not some other brand because those are very very good thrust bearings. Um, they work very well, that is actually what I did. I put a line uh, T-Rex 450 bearing in there um, and it works, it works great. Now there's one thing that sometimes uh, people forget to do and it's definitely not included in the kit is with any thrust bearing you have to put grease on the on the actual uh, thrust balls uh, which is your part of the bearing um, now you have to do that now the the amount that you put on is also very important too much is not good because it's going to draw a lot of dirt and dust in there and eventually it's going to again cause a lot cause a lot of grinding uh, and even without that it's going to cause uh, too much um, that sort of like a mushy sort of feeling and it's not going to be smooth. Uh, if you don't put anything at all then also it will heat up, uh, it could damage it, won't work very well. Um, and yes it, it will heat up because uh, that servo is going to move quite fast to make adjustments and that really is what is holding the tail section uh, where it is. So what is enough? Basically what I like to do is just get a little bit of grease between my fingers and just rub it over the balls um, so that they just coated with it. Okay, there shouldn't be any excess along uh, any other part uh, of the thrust bearing. Um, the grease I like to use, and look, you can use different types of grease, but the one I like, again, it's a, there's different types of grease that you use uh, depending on the application, but the one in the T-Rex 450 uh, that's recommended there works. You can use uh, what's called uh, black grease from Team Associated, uh, which is uh, for more for radio control cars. But uh, I can tell you that that grease is amazing. I've used it on my uh, 112 scale electric on road car, pan car, um, and you know that that uh, that thing goes at ridiculous speeds. So um, definitely that that grease does the job. The number two thing is the links, and you can see again in the picture the the, the two links. 
Uh, don't change, you don't need to worry about changing the, uh, what they link to, basically the balls that sit on the top section and then the bottom section uh, where your servo is. What you need to think about is the, um, is the links themselves. The links that come with the kit are very thin. Um, they're not the best quality. Also, the, the, the joints that clip onto to those links are not the best quality. They're not bad, uh, but they're not the best. Now, the one thing to be fit up, there's, two, there's a few options. You can either go with steel, um, or steel, aluminium, or titanium. The material is less of the issue, but the thickness is what's really important. Is if you, you need to get, if you're getting a softer material like aluminium, uh, then you're going to want something a bit thicker. Uh, on those links, uh, basically to, to be more beefy. Steel, obviously, um, the ones that are there are, I think, a little too too thin, uh, so still beef it up. But titanium, there's, there's a few titanium out there, and it gets a little bit more expensive, but they're not that bad. Uh, they're not that expensive, to be honest. You can get titanium ones, um, and then even those are already, a little, they would be a little bit thicker than, than the current ones. And just that, just beefing that up already is giving it very good stability along that mechanism. Okay, if you think about it, that's the one thing that's connecting your servo to the mechanism. The next thing is the ball joints themselves also get some better quality ones. There's a lot of radio car manufacturers that make them, and also again, uh, Alain also make them. Just make sure it's the right size. Now I'm not sure what the manual is, uh, what the manual says, but you can you can check it, um, or even without the manual, you can just check the the ones that come with the kit, they'll tell you what the size of the balls are uh, on the one side and then you can get the, the correct ones. So it's very important to, to, to do that. Um, you change those two things and man that thing is going to be solid as a rock. Um, you're going to get very smooth action from the bearing and you're going to get very strong uh, strength from the um, from the, the mechanism itself and if you think about it that mechanism from the servo your servo can handle it sure no problem but you, you know if, if, if the you know it always goes to whatever is the weakest link and if those links themselves are the weakest links then it's really not going to be that great and they have to support the entire weight of the mechanism the motor that you have on there part of the wire of the motor which yes it is actually rather adds quite a few grams to it the propeller, propeller adapter, all of that. So all of that put together adds quite a lot of weight and you need to have some strong um, uh, strong links. So those two things are how I would fix that mechanism. A lot of people have changed the mechanism out completely, put different mechanisms there. Uh, I'm working on a new mechanism uh, system uh, uh, for, for my own tricopter, which we're gonna, I'm going to look at. But... Um, in reality, you can do that to, to this talon and it will work. Uh, it will work just fine. It will be great. Um, I started out with the, the normal version with uh, some 900 kV 2216 size motors just to test it out. I think it was 12 inch propellers and just to see how it flies. And now we've uh, upgraded it to the longer arms. Uh, we've got bigger motors on and we swing. Uh, 14, 15 inch, we're still good doing some testing, 14, 15 inch propellers on that to give us extremely long uh, run times. Uh, we're still running a 4S, we're going to try a 6S setup eventually, uh, but we're going to get extremely, extremely long run times off that tricopter. We've put a, 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 two, a 2D uh, stabilizer, camera stabilizer on there now, uh, and we're going to upgrade that to a 3 eventually. Uh, and we'll see how that goes, but uh, we've uh, we've got a previous video on the first uh, run of it, um, basically an introduction on it, and you can see even the aerial flight I took in in, a gar in my garage, and uh, it's extremely stable uh, the, uh, with the stabilizer as well. And I was moving around quite a bit, and the camera stabilizer worked very nicely. Um, there was zero jello, so it's it's really cool. We're running APM uh, on there. Uh, with GPS, we still got to do a little bit of work on that. Uh, but yes, um, that uh, that tricopter works well. You just got to sort out that back end. Uh, but it's like that with most things. If if uh, you're familiar with helicopters, if you ever build a T-Rex, even a T-Rex 450, a line makes amazing quality parts. Uh, so I'm sure other brands as well. But um, with, with when you're considering the quality of those parts and sometimes it still doesn't fly properly it tells you that it needs to be set up correctly it needs to be built correctly um, so that is a part of it 
uh, especially when you've got moving parts like that, which uh, quadcopters don't have. They just have your motors uh, moving. Uh, tricopters added in an extra part. So that's something to think about. All right, guys, I'm going to get back to my workout. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to leave your comments below. If you've got any questions, please leave them there. I've, uh, I've answered everybody that's uh, basically uh, sent me a question. I've always tried to answer as quickly as possible. That's why I'm making this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Let me know what you think. Uh, and I will see you next time. Keep safe. Keep flying. Ciao.